Hi guys, welcome to a brand new Christmas related episode of AB in the Films. This was one of the best movie theater experiences I've had in a few years. Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. Zing, zing, zing went my heart strings. From the moment I saw him, I fell. Back in season five of AB in the Films, I did a Christmas episode, a very long one, entitled The Christmas Special's Christmas Special, where I talked about everything I watch during the Christmas season. This film, I'm adding to the list now, okay? I, I can't imagine going through Christmas without watching this film at least maybe twice, because I loved this movie and... Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a little story here. Back in July of this year, 2019, I was at a thrift store shopping for Rocky and Bubba's pants, which was for the man and dog vlogs. Or, um, or was this back in June? No, it, it was June, July. It was over the summer. This is when we were doing the vlogs. And whenever I'm in a thrift store, um, because I grew up with Blockbuster and all those video stores, I usually look around and see if they have any video cassettes, and sometimes they do in the thrift store. So I went there, and I saw they had a copy on VHS of Meet Me in St. Louis. And I said, oh, that's that movie, that's the, one of those Christmas films that, oh, I've been, because I've, I've been wanting to see that, because again, I'm a big fan of movies from the 30s and 40s and 50s, especially if they're Christmas movies, and especially if they're films I haven't seen before. Because like I said, you know, all the Christmas stuff that I watch every year, and I explained it in the, in the Christmas specials, Christmas special episode that I you, that I did, um, you get tired of watching that stuff every year because you see it all the time. You want something new. And a lot of these... Now, again, these movies have been around for a long time. You know, we're talking the 1940s here. These films have been along, around for a while. But I've never seen them. I know there's a lot of people out there who have, but I haven't seen some of these films. And... Usually on Turner Classic Movies, they'll play them. So anyway, back to my story. I was going to buy that VHS copy of Meet Me in St. Louis. I was going to put it on the shelf. And I was and I was interested. I mean, hey, Judy Garland. You know, I've, I've ne I, I'm a big Judy Garland fan. I love The Wizard of Oz. I've been watching that movie for over 20 years. Um, but I didn't buy it because I only had a couple bucks on me, and I needed the stuff for the man and dog. So I said, I'll come back for that. No one's going to buy a VHS tape in 2019 other than me. Maybe some people will. But for the most part, I, I think it'll still be sitting on the shelf months from now. Well, Christmas time is here. For, all throughout this week, or last week, I've been wanting to go back to the thrift store to go pick it up. I went to pick it up. It was gone. Somebody took it. And I thought, well, that's just perfect. So I come back home. I'm on the couch, I'm sur surfing through the internet, and I'm just watching Turner Classic Movies stuff. Because I'm a big, because like I said, I'm a big fan. And I come across a trailer for Meet Me in St. Louis. It turns out they are bringing it back in the movie theater for the 75th anniversary. It turns 75 years old this year. It was released in 1944. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But not only that, they're releasing it on one of the days that I am off from my job. And I'm like... You know what? I'm going. I am going to this now. So, yeah, mother of all coincidences, right? <laughs> so, I went to see it, sat down, theater was almost completely packed. Everybody that went to that that went to the theater had already seen this most likely. Um, and a lot of families were there too. You know, it wasn't just people that were my grandparents' age or my parents' age, it was, you know, some kids were there, too, with the families. Um, and I just went in by myself, ex excited to see this, and I loved it. I instantly loved it. Here's one of the reasons why I was so interested in seeing this. Number one, what got me excited to see this movie on the big screen for the first time is that, first of all, this is a film that's been around for a long, long time, and it was new to me. So this felt like I was seeing a new release. And also, this is the first time I have seen Judy Garland in a movie that's not The Wizard of Oz. 
I've never seen another Judy Garland movie other than The Wizard of Oz. And I've been seeing The Wizard of Oz for the last 20 years. I mean, I have it, I have it right here, guys. I've been watching the... Ooh. Ooh, that's a mistake. I've been watching this for over 20 years, you guys. So, I've never seen another Judy Garland movie. I know she did a lot of other big Hollywood films, especially for MGM. This is one of them. But I never got around to seeing them. So this film I finally saw, and love the songs, love this family, love these characters. You know, wa watching this movie, I, I got it. I, got I completely understand why, w w what this is. This movie made me sad leaving the theater because you will never ever see a movie like this made in Hollywood today. You would not. A musical, yeah, we still get those, but you know, the, the, the conflicts in this movie are not manufactured. There's no villain in this movie because the plot doesn't need that. And a lot of people would probably say today in Hollywood, well, it needs a villain. That would make it more, you know, climactic or whatever. It needs swearing. It needs to be on edge. No, this movie, it's about a family who lives in St. Louis and they just go through the year. It's them living in St. Louis, living their lives. Judy Garland has a crush on the boy next door. Her, her, her little sister, Margaret O'Brien, who, by the way, I loved in this movie. I want to see more movies with Margaret O'Brien. I think this was her first film, I, I think. I could be wrong. I think she's like seven years old. And by the way, I never felt like she was playing a character in this. Because sometimes, sometimes when, I, when I see child actors, I usually, like, they either go way over the top, like, okay, I can never see a child acting this way in real life, or they can't act at all, or somebody did somebody a favor to get their kid in the movie. No. Every time Margaret O'Brien is on the screen, I feel like she's not playing a character. She just looks like she's having the time of her life and a camera was rolling in the background capturing it. That's what it feels like, because she is having so much fun when she, whenever she's on the screen. She can act. I mean, she's really, really good in this. I, I never heard of her, and I want to see more of her movies. I'm pretty sure she has some. Um, but, uh, so, so like I said, what is this movie about? This, this, this is an MGM musical. It was made in the 40s, and it was made by MGM. Of course it's a musical. <laughs> They did so many of those. And a lot of them are really, really good. I've seen, I've seen some of them. Um, but, you know, I went into this movie thinking this was going to... Because, again, this is one of those Christmas movies that Turner Classic Movies brings out every year. And I thought this whole movie... I mean, it's an hour and 52 minutes long. I thought this was going to be some great musical about Christmas. And, like, Christmas doesn't come into the movie until the last 20 minutes. And then I started thinking, oh, maybe it's like it's a wonderful life, you know, because the whole, you know, we see the whole, we see the whole story of George Bailey, and then the last, like, half hour or so is really about Christmas. But then I started to think about it, and I'm like, no, it's a wonderful life. The whole movie does take place on Christmas, because it starts on Christmas Eve, and it ends on Christmas Eve. Everything in between is what we are watching. Clarence is like the audience. We're watching what George Bailey's life is like so that when we get to the end, we know what he's going to go through or how he's going to learn his lesson. And also we look for things later in the movie. Here, it's it's just a great, you know, well, actually, it's, a, it's an unfortunate situation. Judy Garland's father... Mr. S By the way, their last name is Smith. Typical American family, right? <laughs> the last name is Smith. Um, uh, n n well, n n not that it means anything, but still. Um, their father comes home, and he says, we're leaving St. Louis to go to New York, because he has a promotion. He's, they have to leave their hometown of, Missouri, of um, St. Louis. And, you know, the family's having a hard time coping with that. They leave right after Christmas. So Christmas is a little bit of a downer for, for the family. And, you know, having gone through something like that, moving out of your... I didn't move out of my house around Christmas time. Very close to Christmas time, actually. But I can relate to that. I can relate to that. And here's something else I bet you guys didn't notice. I Because I didn't know this. You know the song... Um, 
the Christmas song, what is it? Uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas? We all know that song, right? This is where that song came from. The song was written for this film. It was written for Judy Garland to sing in the movie. And here's one of the great things about it. The writers who wrote this song, originally, the lyrics were, I think it was something like, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, It's All in the Past, N -n -n Now You Know This Could Be Your Last, or something like that. And Judy Garland read this and she said, whoa, 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 I'm not going to sing this. I'm not going to sing this song to a, to a seven-year-old. She, she sings it to her sister, to a seven-year-old saying this could be her last Christmas. Go back and rewrite that. And they, and they came up with, uh, have yourself a merry little Christmas, let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. So it's because of Judy Garland we have those lyrics. I mean, that, I didn't know that, you know, and, um. And, and, and the director of the film, of uh, Vincent Minnelli, became her husband. She had Liza Minnelli with him. I didn't know that. I never, I never thought of that. I never realized that. Uh, but, but the song sequences. The song sequences in this movie. Like, there's a scene. when they, Now, again, the movie takes place in 1903. But... When they so a lot of the dialogue feels a little you know outdated and stuff like like like, like drinking is considered oh you know it's very taboo <laughs> I mean it, it's the early 1900s and these are teenagers you know but they have this house party and they're doing skip to my Lou and they're like having this big musical dance sequence and and I'm watching this and I'm like you know. I want to go to this house party. These people look like they're just having so much fun. I don't care if it looks lame and, you know, out of date. You know, you know, there's no twerking or drinking or anything like that. Like, I don't want to go to those parties. This is the party I want to go to. These people are having fun here. So, yeah, it's it's like little moments like that. And, uh, and of course, the famous trolley song. You know, I love that. Good luck getting that song out of your head. <laughs> Clang, clang, clang went the trolley. Ding, ding, ding went the bell. So what did I think of this movie? I I loved it. I just ordered it on DVD. Uh, it's a shame I couldn't get that VHS copy, but eh, whatever. Um, I love this movie. I'm adding this to the Christmas specials, Christmas special, uh, you know, the other list of films and television that I watch every Christmas. I'm adding this to the list now. And if you guys haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend you check it out. I had a great time watching it. Um, another one of the things I enjoyed about this movie, I really liked the um, the whole crush aspect that um, Esther, Judy Garland's character, has with the boy next door, played by Tom Drake. Um, again, he's kind of a bland character, in my opinion. The, the, you know, the, the, There's not much uh, character to him. But... It is an interesting situation because, again, I, I always love those love stories from the 30s and 40s and 50s, you know. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't checked this movie out, highly recommend you do. I loved it. First time I ever saw it. I actually want to see more of Judy Garland's work. <laughs> so, those are my thoughts on Meet Me in St. Louis, and I will see you guys in the next review. Later.